Hi guys, and welcome back to another installment of Secret Graceland, where we will explore all corners of our favorite historic home. Let's dive in. This first one is kind of gross, but true. In 2003, Lisa Marie Presley gave an interview with Rolling Stone magazine. In it, her daughter let slip that when Lisa was a kid, cruising around the Graceland grounds in her very own golf cart, she would sometimes run over frogs. So going into the house, I want to share a fun fact with you. Elvis was known for his signature sunglasses, but did you know he wore reading glasses? In fact, he would leave multiple pairs of reading glasses all around Graceland for whenever he needed them, according to his friend, Charlie Hodge. I have chapsticks all over my house and Elvis had reading glasses. This particular pair, which is Neo Style brand, was left in Charlie's room in the basement. Something that I've recently just noticed at Graceland these giant vents in the ceiling, especially in the front part of the house. Looking back through old photos from the 70s, these weren't there. Possibly added for the building to become a museum in 1982, these large vents can be seen in the foyer, living room, and the dining room. Okay, a couple months ago, I created a video about a newly surfaced photo of the dining room from 1963, shared by Fred Hoobry. This is the photo here, so if you haven't seen that video and you're interested in a deep dive into the dining room, it will either be linked below or you can click the link that pops out at the top here. So in that video, I talk about the sunburst clock that's over the fireplace in the living room and discuss whether it's in fact the same one that George Klein gave Elvis that's the one that's there today or put there by the interior designer in 1957. Well, a lady named Jessica on Facebook brought this to my attention and it solved the mystery. If you've toured Graceland in the last few years, you will have seen a few renderings of Graceland rooms created by the design team when Elvis first moved in. These are framed and line the walls in the Hall of Gold in the Trophy Building. One of them is the living room with furniture and decor that we recognize today. Here is my picture of that rendering. I totally forgot about these, but it solves everything. This is the designer's vision for the living room. In this view, the foyer is to the left and the music room is on the right. In the middle above the fireplace is the framed clock that the interior designer added to this space in 1957, which is the same one spotted in the 1963 photo of the living room. The one that we see on the tour today is the one that GK gave Elvis for Christmas sometime after 1963. In March 1965, Elvis did a photo shoot for the Commercial Appeal, which took place in both the music room and the living room. In one of my favorite photos of Elvis at Graceland, he is relaxed on the 15-foot couch, foot on the coffee table, strumming his early 60s Olympic white Fender Precision bass. There's a lot to take in from this crystal clear photo, but today we're only focusing on the bass. According to friend Jerry Schilling, Elvis enjoyed playing the bass. This very one can be seen in the 1966 movie Spin Out, although Elvis isn't playing it. It's either slung over his shoulder or resting in a stand. And it might have even made an appearance in his LA home when the Beatles came over later this same year, 1965. This P bass is still in the Graceland archive and has been displayed here and there over the years, even having its own photo shoot in the same spot as the 1965 photo only this time it was by itself. Let's go down the hall and look at something cool I found on eBay. This picture of Minnie Mae's bedroom is small and very blurry, but it gives lots of clues. The downstairs bedroom that we see today looks so much like it did in the late 1950s when Gladys and Vernon lived in it. But in the meantime, when the room belonged to Dodger, it looked very different. Let's get a closer look. So in this view, the photographer is standing across from where we stand at the ropes, facing the doorway. We can see four people here. On the left, it could be Minnie Mae's daughter, Gladys or Nash. Grandma is seated in the middle. Aunt Delta in the floral dress and someone standing in the doorway to the bathroom. Grandma moved downstairs in the late 60s because her previous bedroom upstairs became Lisa Marie's nursery. Grandma had floral wallpaper, a blue bedspread and what looks to be blue carpet and different furniture than what we see on the tour today. This was likely how Elvis last saw this bedroom, as Grandma had it. A clearer look, but not as broad of a shot, is this one, originally shared in Priscilla's book, Elvis and Me. Grandma is sitting in her chair in the same spot as that other photo, Aunt Delta standing behind, and Lisa Marie sitting next to her great-grandma. 
We can get a better look at the type of chair that was in this room at the time, as well as the floral wallpaper added when it was Minnie Mae's bedroom, as well as the front of her bedroom door covered in red shag carpet squares. Okay, let's take a quick break, but when we come back, a quick stop in the kitchen before taking a closer look at something that might have been disguised and hidden in plain sight. Welcome back. There are a few items on display in Graceland's kitchen that I think are worth a closer look. These three canisters, small, medium, and large, are on the counter next to the stove, decorated with vegetables, fish, and lobsters. They are no doubt long empty, but it's interesting to see the type of items that Elvis saw in his kitchen. Okay, the possible item in disguise. Let's take our tour down the stairs to the basement and turn left into the TCB den. In a previous Secret Graceland video, ironically titled Hidden in Plain Sight, I talked about a couple of chairs located in this room. If you want to watch that one, here is the link up here, or it will be included in the description box as well. These chairs with this retro zigzag pattern were in the basement in the 1960s and were recently being sold on Etsy at the time of my video and have since sold. Viewer Joe contacted me with a very interesting theory that I want to share with you guys with her permission. So let's take a closer look at these recliners. The overall shape as well as the buttons on the back of the seat. There's a pattern, three in the top row, four in the next, three again, four again, and then three for a total of 17 buttons. Do you think this chair looks like the two chairs in the upstairs living room? Here's a photo from 1963 taken in the dining room, but in the background, we can see the original white chairs with a really similar shape to the chevron pattern chairs that ended up downstairs. The best look I've ever found of one of the white living room chairs is this one from that 1965 photo shoot that Elvis did. There's that same pattern of buttons. Less in the top row, more in the next row, less in the next row, and so on. So maybe Elvis had white chairs for the living room and then funky pattern chairs for the basement. But the chairs that we see in the living room today are not the original chairs. These were added to the house for tours to resemble the white chairs that Elvis had in here in the early days. If the white chairs don't exist anymore, it's possible that they were reupholstered and put downstairs in the basement. Or were they in the basement since 1957? Here is the interior designer's rendering of the den, the room that would later have the lightning bolt. In it are two chairs that have a different shape but are recliners and definitely have a funky zigzag pattern. So it's possible that they bought two formal ones upstairs and had two fun casual ones for this space. And that is it. What was your favorite part? Let me know in the comments below. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram for rare photos and fun facts that don't make it into the videos. The links for those are in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe for more adventures.